what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the Pixel Plus UI version 4.6 official build based on Android 12 L and this is the 13th June 2022 build. So the latest one as of right now and yes I have made a previous video on the Pixel Plus UI version 4.6 for the Redmi Note 7 Pro. For some of the things you can check out that video because some things are still similar with that but some of those things are still not similar and if you don't know what I'm talking about you will get to know that in this particular video of course so do watch it till the end. Now let me tell you that I have flashed this ROM with the latest Orange Fox recovery the unofficial one. If you have no idea you will find the guide for that in the description to actually to flash that and if you want to download that too all the important download links you need to actually flash this ROM will be present in the description again. So first things first let me show you how the about section looks like and this is how it looks. We have the Pixel Plus UI logo right there and the Android version shows as Android 12 but this is actually Android 12 L not Android 12. Let me go back the green color is because I have changed the chroma factor over here and I'm using this cactus kind of wallpaper it's from that and it's because of the monet theme engine of course. And here we have the Pixel Plus UI version showing as 4.6. The device maintainer is of course Basharat and we have the June security patch right here. And the stock kernel is the Vantom kernel and here is the SNX readers showing as enforcing again 13 June 2022 build. In the system panel we have our system updater and of course you can check for updates from right here whenever you want to. And this is the latest update that's why it doesn't show a newer update of course. And this is how the other settings looks like. It doesn't have the gestures and stuff over here because those things are present in the pixelizer or the customization settings. Now talking about the home screen, yes this is how it looks like. To the left of the home screen we have the Google's Discover page and we have the swiping up and stuff getting you to the app drawer. And if you scroll down or swipe down from the home screen you will get the quick setting panel just like this. And yes it looks beautiful everywhere it's fast and snappy now talking about the fluidness of the ui let me actually tell you this rom is f2 phase phase 2 like the pixel os so that's why you are not gonna see any kind of lags and stutters anywhere in the whole ui it feels super smooth it just flies through everything so yeah no issues whatsoever with the like performance of this rom and everywhere i do feel the rom actually feels really really snappy overall so just notice even in the recent panel and stuff and if you want to switch between apps and stuff just notice how fast it feels of course the telegram app showed the thing which cannot because it's locked by the way this is how the calculator and stuff looks like pretty bold kind of ui it has and you can scroll it down i guess yep that what that's what you can do so again you have the f2fs that's why everywhere the whole ui actually feels much much faster than how it was previously with the pixel plus ui as well right now as it has switched to the f2fs that's why you are getting a very very smooth and just buttery smooth experience overall all over the ui with 120 hertz of course running all the time so yeah the overall experience of the whole ui is just awesome and just notice the animations how smoothly everything works so yeah no issues whatsoever now let me talk about the quick setting panel first and here you can edit and add multiple toggles whichever you want to add and you can see the other options which are present over here you can add any kind of toggle that you are willing to now let me show you which toggles that i have added i have this wi-fi mobile data the bluetooth toggle and stuff of course the bluetooth battery stats shows up right there and it also shows up in the series bar too if you're looking at that and yes if you scroll down just like this we have the dark theme and the night light auto rotate hotspot and we have the always on display toggle as well then we have the airplane mode the nearby shared the screen recorder option is there and we have the heads up the battery saver the do not disturb and the data saver as well and here we have the google home controls the extra dim and the moto audio is also there then we have the live display and actually toggle this and there is that outdoor or bright sunlight mode and with that it actually shows really really bright the whole screen becomes bright so no issues with that i'll just like suggest put it to automatic or something and the anti flicker is the dc dimming mode and that actually works perfectly fine over here again the dc dimming is actually working fine that's just like awesome and we have this do not disturb or the sound toggle and if you tap and hold on it you get this volume panel which looks like this and also talking about the power menu we have, as you can see there is the like advanced reboot option from which you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here let me go back and right now if i show you the volume panel this is how it looks like and we have the expansion option just like this in the dark theme it actually looks better let me actually switch to the dark theme and just notice how fast it switches so yeah it has already switched to the dark theme and yes the black is completely pitch black no issues with that you can actually enable that black theme but in this 
if you want to switch the like bluetooth device you can definitely switch the output device over here no issues whatsoever with that just notice how fluidly you can do that and yes the option just appears normally but even with the stock launcher this is kind of disappointing that if i tap on this refresh icon on this subscriber account widget it actually kind of force closes not really sure why but yeah it's happening this is the pixel launcher present by default over here and here in the home screen settings again we have the shaishan's disabling option if you are looking for that but there is no double tap to sleep of course because this is a pixel launcher it does not have much customizations that's how it is right now let me show you the pixelizer this is how it looks like we have the theme section of course you will find a huge amount of customization now i have changed the chroma factor to 300 that's why it looks really colorful but you can turn it down if you want to just like this and of course there are these fonts plethora of fonts you will get over here no issues with the fonts there are huge amount of options use black theme simply means that pitch black over here you can turn it on or off from here and we have the white luminance the use accurate shades and the linear colors etc so a lot of color kind of tweaks are there and in the clock and date we have this like clock of course you can customize that i have already done that and the battery icon styles are there we have the icon portrait circle dotted circle etc but that landscape kind of battery icons are missing from here now we also have the battery percentage you can have it next to the icon or something if you want to and if you scroll down more we have the brightness control so as you can see i can swipe the finger on the status bar to actually adjust or control the brightness this is a really handy feature now we also have the small mobile data type icon the show 4g instead of lte the combined signal icons options are there show call strength etc and we have the quick setting toggle customization the clear all button appears and here it's not appearing right now but you can actually change the button style from right here and then we have the button section we have gesture navigation here and this is where you will find the gesture navigation settings and if you go into it we have the edge long swipe actions all of these settings you can change the gesture indicator and stuff the swipe to invoke assistant option is there if you scroll down more we have the pill length customization but there is no thickness customization over here and the edge touch area the full screen gestures etc you can enable also there is a two button and three button navigations are there and for both you can actually enable invert layout let me go back we have the edge long swipe action and if you scroll down more we have the press and hold power button action there is that advanced reboot and we have the long press power button toggle torch and then we have the automatically turn off torch option and then we have the wake up device with the volume keys and stuff let me go back to the gestures here we have the quick tap or the back tap functionality and it actually works perfectly fine just notice it shows quick tap detected so yeah it works fine and we have the quickly open camera then we have the gesture navigation again and we have the one-handed mode and again it works perfectly fine let me go back we have the press and hold power button for assistant that thing again and the swipe quick screenshot i have already enabled that and you can see there is the share edit and the delete and the google lens option just notice so yes all of these should be working perfectly fine and we do have the playback control and the prevent ringing option let me go back in the lock screen we have the four small clock then the lock screen charging info then we have the hide quick setting option for the lock screen then double tap to sleep both are working fine the double tap to wake and sleep both i mean and in here we have the notifications and the in-call vibration options are there the blink flashlight for incoming call option is there kill app button is there and in the misc settings we have the game space and from here you can disable the heads up here we have the overlay menu opacity and the disable the usb debugging and stuff of course you can add any game that you want to let me go back we have the invert three button layout again then we have the show volume panel on the left side if you want that and the launch music app on headset connect so that's all the customizations which are present over here enough about the customization right now let me just jump back to the home screen and right now i'm going to show you the stock camera yes this one comes with the miui camera or the anix camera you may say and it works perfectly fine and in the portrait mode too if i switch the front camera as you can see right now my front camera is working fine so no issues whatsoever with the front camera and stuff if you are willing to see this as you can see in the video settings too you get up to 1080p 30fps option for the front camera and if you switch the back camera the 4k 30fps option i mean up to 4k 30fps option then you can of course switch to 1080p 60fps then also in the pro video mode you can shoot manual videos up to 4k 30fps so yeah that is not a problem at all even the shutter speed and stuff you can control from right here with the manual video mode and here let me tell you that the 61 megapixel does work but then again there is a 61 megapixel camera bug that if you shoot on direct sunlight it will force close the camera yes that bug is still present right now let me talk about one more bug that is the slow motion yes slow motion is still broken over here but vlog mode and stuff should be working perfectly fine here no issues with those also if you're wondering if the super macro mode is working fine or not let me actually show you if you are noticing 
it's just working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever so super macro is not a problem here the next thing let's talk about the battery settings yes here this is one part where i feel just disappointed because let me tell you on the redmi note 7 pro there was the charging cycles and stuff present in the battery settings in the pixel plus ui version 4.6 but here even though this is a pixel plus ui version 4.6 it does not have the charging cycle or the current battery capacity, design battery capacity, those kind of things. It does offer the battery temperature, but yes, that's pretty basic, I would say, for this kind of ROM. And yes, I have expected to see the charging cycles over here, but I'm kind of disappointed that I cannot really see the charging cycles as of right now. Maybe in future we can see those, but as of right now, I am pretty disappointed with the battery settings at least. But I personally feel that's a really amazing feature, but that is simply not present even on this Pixel Plus UI version 4.6. Now here we have the Pixel battery stats provider, the adaptive preference, the battery usage and stuff. And of course it shows the battery percentage right there. And let me show you. And with this Aku battery app, I have tested the battery life of course. I have got about 8 hours of screen on time, which is not bad at all. It's pretty good. And even the health section, it shows I have about 90% health left. So yes, the battery life is decent. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad. But yes, it's a little less I'm seeing like in these F2FS ROMs. It's a little less when compared to ROMs like the Nusantara and stuff, which was not based on F2FS. Yes, you might have to compromise a little bit with the battery life because the performance over here is just fabulous and fantastic. Everywhere, the whole UI just stays battery smooth, no issues whatsoever. And of course, fast charging works perfectly fine here without any problems. The 33 watt fast charger that I have used works really, really great. Let me go back now in the sound and vibrations. And in here, we have this kind of settings. Pretty normal if you scroll down more we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option if you scroll down more we have the dolby atmos customization right here and we have the dial per tones so the screen locking sound charging vibration and stuff vibrate to indicate call status then we have the me sound and answer as well from here you can change the presets the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well was amazing i haven't had any issues we have all these presets to change and we have this enable hi-fi option too if you want to use that so yeah sound quality was great overall on this particular rom now here we can of course change this haptic feedback intensity that's really good that you can control the whole device haptic feedback and it feels really awesome even when you are going back or something next thing is the display settings we have the brightness level the adaptive brightness in the lock screen we have the allow face unlock and you can choose it to when swiping up on lock screen yes i have completely set up the face unlock already and let me go back we have the screen timeout the display size and the live display options are there from here you can enable the anti flicker mode then you can switch to the outdoor bright sun mode and the color calibration you can do from right here and the picture adjustment options are there colors are saturated by default over here if we scroll down more we have the smooth display or the 120 hertz and we have the allow window level blurs and if you are willing to see the window level blurs i think you can see it right over here and if you're noticing this is the window level blur and here we have the double tap to wake and sleep and the wake up on plug you can disable it if you want to let me go back we have the wallpapers and styles as well and in here we have up to 5x5 five five upgrade the themed icons you can enable from right here also there is the wallpaper colors and the basic colors choosing option too if you want to use those now inside security if you go into the settings we don't get the quick unlock it may be disappointing for you even for me but for some it may not matter now talking about the fingerprint scanner and face unlock yes i have already added the face unlock and changed it to when swiping up on lock screen i'll recommend that and we have added the two fingerprints over here right now i'll show you the fingerprint scanner speed but before that let me actually enable the always on display and here let me show you this is how the always on display looks like i feel the always on display on this particular rom is a little bit better i would say but yes as soon as i say that in video it goes weird like i don't know what should i do like i have never seen this kind of problem when i was using the device normally but right now it's like flickering and stuff so yeah other than that the double tap to wake is working fine from the always on display just notice in other roms it doesn't work but here it works perfectly fine and even the always on display i have seen it's just much much more stable experience i don't know maybe because of the lights and stuff it's working weirdly but yes double tap to wake again is working fine double tap to sleep is working fine First of all, let me show you the face unlock for that. I have to swipe up on the lock screen and just notice that black border over there and it unlocks perfectly fine. Let me try one more time. I'll just double tap and swipe up. And this is how it unlocks with the face unlock. It's a blazing fast experience with the face unlock over here, I would say. And right now, let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed. Just tap the fingerprint scanner and it unlocks. Let me try one more time. And once you are tapping the fingerprint scanner, this is how the animation looks like. So it has unlocked 
and just notice this like ripple kind of effect looks really beautiful over here all over the lock screen whenever you are pressing the power button and if i tap the view mid scanner it unlocks 100 percent of the time without any problems so the fingerprint scanner speed is really awesome. I have not had any issues whatsoever with the fingerprint scanner here. Now talking with the app lock, you can choose the protected apps from right here. You can lock any particular app that you are willing to. And again, the Google Photos does not appear in these F2FS ROMs. I don't know why, but let me show you if I have locked this particular app. This is how it, the UI looks like. If I tap the fingerprint scanner, that should unlock. Yes, the app has unlocked. So yes, app lock is working perfectly fine without any problems. And even if I open Telegram, right now if I tap the Fumit scanner, and as you can see, it has unlocked. Right now, let me show you the basic things. The IR Bluster is working fine here, if you are noticing. Talking about banking apps, yes, the banking apps are working fine right out of the box. It passes the safety net right out of the box. No issues whatsoever with the banking apps. Also, the DRM Info stays as L1 here, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. It should not be a problem at all. And of course, you are going to get the Google Photos unlimited backup over here as it shows as a pixel. By the way, this is how the stock dialer looks like. If I place a call, this is how the in-call UI should look like. And of course, there's a Google dialer, vault e-calling are working fine. And there is that call recording option if you're willing to see that. Now talking about overall performance, let me tell you that overall performance of this ROM was really, really amazing. I haven't faced any issues. Just notice how fast you can just switch and just recent panel and stuff. Animations are just flawless. Like even from this app, if I want to switch to this app, just notice how flawlessly I can do that. So yeah, and even here, the split top is working perfectly fine. If you're noticing the split top and the like rescaling and stuff are working fine. And if you scroll down just like this, just notice how smoothly it does that with two or like with both the apps. And even if I have one of my video being played in the background, just notice the scrolling still stays really, really smooth, just like this. And of course, I'm using this PIP over here. So just notice how smooth is the background even when I have a picture in picture mode video playing over there. So yeah, no issues whatsoever with the performance of this ROM. And if you want to see the benchmarks of this particular ROM here are the N22 and Geekbench score. And with a CPU stress test, you can see from the screen, I would say the performance of this ROM was one of the best out there. And it was completely flawless experience, I would say, with really driving on this particular ROM. It, I haven't faced any kind of issues at all. And overall customizations are really, really great. But then again, I do miss the like battery charging cycle seeing option. But yeah, that might be a very minor thing for you. Let me know in the comments, what do you guys think? Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share this video with your friends if you feel like this is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.